Hey everybody, welcome back to my first podcast episode in two and a half years. Yes, it's been a minute, but your girl has found the energy, the fire to start this podcast up again. I typically use my podcast to dive deeper into news articles and information that is provided in those news articles. And what we are going to talk about today is this investigation that continues to grow when it comes to the Russian administration and financing right-wing extreme influencers, commentators, content creators that you see out on YouTube, that you see with their own podcasts, out on Twitter, on TikTok, on Facebook. Yes, if you follow me on TikTok or on YouTube, then you know that I have done a couple of um, videos briefly talking about these investigations. The last video I did, I talked about the amount of money that these content creators were making from Vladimir Putin and the Russian administration. I talked about specific courtroom documents that um, provided information into two content creators over on on YouTube known in the documents as Commentator 1 and Commentator 2. And they were making $100,000 per episode. One of the commentators, the content creators, signed a contract where he would deliver four episodes within a month, one episode a week. And those episodes, the total would come to $400,000, which would make each episode $100,000. And then as a signing bonus, he got another hundred thousand dollars. Now there's plenty of chatter happening happening out there on social media where they are listing the names of these content creators. I'm not going to list the names of the content creators. I'm on, only going to provide you with information that's that's directly in the legal documents. Okay? But I'm sure if you Go out there on social media like I do. You've come across who these alleged content creators, these political right wing extremist content creators are. Okay, so now I have come across more legal documents regarding the Russian administration and their ties to right-wing news media. And at this point, there is nothing anyone can tell me that does not... If anybody tries to tell me that Russia is not tied to right-wing news media, I'm going to tell you, you are lying. At this point, Putin and his administration are intertwine into right-wing news media, right-wing social media influencers, content creators, um, commentarians, Fox News, Newsmax, they all work for Putin at this point. And I'm, I, I just, my gut tells me that a lot of the people that I see pushing Russian propaganda are some way, somehow, receiving funding from the Russian administration. And these documents that I am going to share with you today will have you thinking the same thing. So 
because of all of the conversation that has been happening about these political right wing extreme commentators who have been tied to receiving funding from Vladimir Putin's administration, Russia. Um, people are digging into, uh, more documents that are out there, legal documents. And, and I heard on yesterday that the recent content creators that have been exposed, there's like four of them or six of them. There is a whole lot more. And I specifically heard there is a list that the Department of Justice has that have over 600 content creators across all social media sites that are being looked into by the Department of Justice. And I was like, where did you get that information? And so I went searching. I went to do my own investigation and I came across a press release by the Department of Justice titled Justice Department Disrupts Covert Russian Government Sponsored Foreign Malign Influence Operation Targeting Audiences in the United States and Elsewhere. And in that press release, it provided a legal affidavit as it relates to the investigation into these um, operations that have been taking place. It's an affidavit that supports a seizure of, of a seizure warrant where they have seized 32 internet domains that have been used by the Russian government and Russian government sponsored actors to engage in foreign malign influence campaigns colloquially referred to as doppelganger. That is wording coming directly from the affidavit in support of a seizure warrant. However, I want to read the press release from the Department of Justice in regards to this investigation. Okay. Okay. So the press release reads it. The press release took place on September 4th. The press release reads the Justice Department today announced the ongoing seizure of 32 Internet domains used in Russian government directed foreign malign influence campaigns colloquially referred to as doppelganger in violation of U.S. money laundering and criminal trademark laws. As alleged in the unsealed affidavit, the Russian companies. Social Design Agency, that's the name of the agency, Structural National Technology, and Anno Dialogue, operating under the direction and control of the Russian Presidential Administration, and in particular, First Deputy Chief of Staff of the Presidential Executive Office, Zer- Sergei Vladilinovich Kirienko, Use these domains, among others, to covertly spread Russian government propaganda with the aim of reducing international support for Ukraine, bolstering pro-Russian policies and interests, and influencing voters in the U.S. and foreign elections, including the U.S. 2024 presidential election. In conjunction with the domain seizures, the U.S. Treasury Department announced the designation of 10 individuals and two entities as part of a coordinated response to Russia's malign influence efforts targeting the 2024 U.S. presidential election. This announcement follows the designation of actors involved in doppelganger announced by the Treasury Department in March. So these investigations have been happening for a few months now. This press release is citing 
an announcement that was made back in March. I have not gone back to look for that announcement. Quote, the Justice Department is seizing 32 Internet domains that the Russian government and Russian government sponsor actors have used to engage in a covert campaign to interfere and influence the outcome of our country's elections. End quote. That was a, a direct quote from Merrick Garland. The quote goes on to say, as alleged in our court filings, President Vladimir Putin's inner circle, including Sergei Kirienko, directed Russian public relations companies to promote disinformation and state sponsored narratives as part of a com- campaign to influence the 2024 U.S. presidential election and internal planning document created by the Kremlin states that a goal of the campaign is to secure Russia's preferred outcome in the election. Let me pause here for a minute. Excuse me. A couple of days ago, Vladimir Putin, he was um, there were news articles put out there that Vladimir Putin came out and endorsed Kamala, Kamala Harris. If you believe that, I have some magic beans to sell you. Remember, a few months ago, Vladimir Putin came out and um, endorsed Joe Biden over Donald Trump. If you believed that, then I have some magic beans to sell you. Vladimir Putin is using reverse psychology. Mm -hmm. He is thinking that Americans are so stupid that if he comes out to endorse a Democratic candidate, then we will all flock to vote for Donald Trump. We are not stupid. We understand reverse psychology and the majority of us who understand policy, who are watching both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump and listening and educating ourselves on what their plans are for this country. If you completely understand and are not operating under a certain amount of ignorance, there's no other word for it. I tried. Then you know The only person that is talking about policy and how to better America and how to help the people in this country is Kamala Harris. Donald Trump is pushing nothing but division, lies, conspiracy theory. He can't talk about policy because his policies are directly tied to the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025. And he knows a lot of people are not on board with the Heritage Foundation, nor are they on board with Project 2025. If you've read Project 2025, and if you've read or watched the videos um, that Donald Trump calls Agenda 47, then you will know that Agenda 47 is tied to and derived from from Project 2025. So yeah, we're not we're not stupid. We know what Vladimir Putin is doing when he came out to endorse Kamala Harris. Reverse psychology is not going to work on us. Moving on with the Department of Justice's um, press release. Presidential election and internal planning document created by the Kremlin states that a goal of the campaign is to secure Russia's preferred outcome in the election. And Russia's preferred outcome in the election is to get Donald Trump into office. The sites we are seizing today were filled with Russian government propaganda that had been created by the Kremlin to reduce international support for Ukraine, bolster pro-Russian policies and interests, and influence, my apologies, coughing attack, 
bolster pro-Russian policies and interests and influence voters in the United States and other countries, our actions today make clear that the Justice Department will be aggressive in countering and disrupting attempts by the Russian government or any other malign actor to interfere in our elections and undermine our democracy. End quote. That is a direct quote from Attorney General Merrick Garland. The press release goes on to say, quote, the department's seizure of 32 Internet domains secretly deployed to spread foreign malign influence demonstrated demonstrates once again, that Russia remains a predominant to foreign threat to our elections. At Putin's direction, Russian companies, um, SDA, Structura, and Anno Dialogue used cyber squatting, fabricated influencers, and fake profiles to covertly promote AI-generated false narratives on social media. Those narratives targeted specific American demographics and regions in a calculated effort to subvert, subvert our, our, our election. Our republic depends on elections that are free from foreign interference, and we will not rest in our efforts to expose foreign malign influence operations and protect our democracy without fear or favor. That is another direct quote from Attorney General Merrick Garland. The press release goes on to say, quote, today's announcement exposes the scope of the Russian government's influence operations and their reliance on cutting edge AI to sow disinformation. That is a direct quote from Christopher Ray. He's the FBI director. And Christopher Ray goes on with his with his statement to say, quote, companies operating at the direction of the Russian government created websites to trick Americans into unwittingly consuming Russian propaganda. By seizing these websites, the FBI is making clear to the world that what they are, Russian attempts to interfere in our elections and influence our society. The FBI will continue to work with our partners to expose and shut down these covert influence campaigns. This seizure illustrates vividly what the U.S. government and private sector partners have warned for months. The Russian government and its proxies are aggressively accelerating the Kremlin's covert efforts to seed false stories and amplify disinformation directed at the American public. This is a direct quote from um, uh, Assistant Attorney General Matthew Olson for the Justice Department's National Security Division. He goes on to say today's announcement reveals Russia is willing to impersonate our free and open press in its egregious schemes. This is our third disruption of Russian foreign malign influence operation in two months, and the Justice Department remains relentless in protecting Americans from such unacceptable conduct. To Russia and any other government seeking to stroke discord in our society, no that we will spare no effort and use every available tool to disrupt and expose this malign activity and defend our democratic institutions. Again, that is a direct quote from Attorney General Matthew G. Olson. He is with the Justice Department's National Security Division. The press release goes on to say, quote, protecting our democratic processes from foreign malign influence in paramount is paramount to ensure enduring public trust. As America's adversaries continue to spew propaganda and disinformation towards the American electorate, we'll use every tool at our disposal to expose and dismantle their insidious foreign influence campaigns. That is a direct quote from U.S. Attorney Jacqueline C. Romero. She is of the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. The press release goes on to say the propaganda did not identify and in fact 
purposely op obfuscated the Russian government or its Asian agents as the source of the content. The perpetrators extensively utilized cyber squatted domains, a method of registering a domain intended to mimic another person or company's website. Registering WashingtonPost.pm to mimic WashingtonPost.com. So these bad actors created a website and registered the website as WashingtonPost.pm. And that website was designed to mimic the WashingtonPost.com. And so people will log on to this fake website thinking that they're logging on to the WashingtonPost.com. And they will think that because they're reading, they think they're reading the Washington Post. They're getting legit information when they are not because they've logged on to a website that mimics the Washington Post. It's like what they do to us content creators. They will create a fake page using our profile picture, using the information in our bio, but the name of that profile is slightly different from the name of the original content creator. Like for instance, I go by Tabitha Speaks Politics or Tabitha Speaks. Um, a bad actor will create a profile that looks exactly like mine. But because Tabitha Speaks Politics or Tabitha Speaks is already taken, they have to create a name for the profile that's very similar to mine, but there is a discrepancy somewhere in the name. So they won't have Tabitha Speaks. They'll have Tabitha Speaks with a period at the end, or they'll have a period at the beginning, or they'll put an underscore somewhere in that name, or they'll change the A in the name to the at sign if, if you know, that, that social media page will allow for that type of thing. They will slightly change the name to throw off individuals and individuals who are not paying attention will sign on or log in and will follow that page thinking that they are following me when they are not. And they will begin to ingest all of the propaganda that is being put on that page. Hopefully that makes sense. So moving on with the press release to publish Russian government messaging falsely presented as content from legitimate news media organizations and in other instances, the perpetrators sought to create their own unique media brands to promote doppelganger content. Um, and it cites recent re reliable news. Among the methods Doppelganger used to drive viewership to the cyber squatted and unique media domains was the deployment of influencers worldwide. That would be paid social media advertisements in some cases created using artificial intelligence tools and the creation of social media profiles. That's what I just um, broke down for you posing as U.S. or other non-Russian citizens to post comments on social media platforms with links to the cyber squatted domains, all of which attempted to trick viewers into believing they were being directly to legitimate news media outlets websites. The press release then goes into an overview about the attached affidavit. So the overview states that the affidavit describes the perpetrator's own internal strategy meeting notes, per project proposals, and other records obtained during the course of the DOJ's investigation. Several notable propaganda project proposals directed at against the United States included. And then it goes on to list where you can find these certain attachments in the affidavit. Um, 
so you can check out what these meeting notes that they were able to get. Doppelgangers, uh, um, foreign malign influence efforts were not directly solely against audiences in the United States. Other targets of the perpetrators' propaganda included Germany, Mexico, and Israel. Among others, doppelgangers' influence campaigns sought to influence the citizenry of those countries to support Russian government objectives, including by undermining the United States' relationship with those countries, um, specifically what's happening with Israel and, and Palestine and what's happening with the United States as far as the war between Russia and the Ukraine and, and other countries around the world. Doppelgangers use the U.S.-based domain names as the direction and control of and for the benefit of sanctioned persons, including Sergei Vlad Vladivlinovic. I know I'm butchering this name. I'm trying. Kirienko, SDA, and Structura violates the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. As a result, the accompanying payments of doppelgangers online infrastructure violate federal money laundering laws. In addition, doppelgangers' publication of content on cyber squatted domains with names and content that mimic legitimate media outlet violates federal criminal trademark laws because those domains featured trademarks registered on the principal register maintained by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. The FBI Philadelphia field office is continuing their investigation in the case. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, the National Securities Division's Counterintelligence and Export Control Section and National Security Cyber Section are prosecuting the case with valuable assistance from the Criminal Division's Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section. Now, let me tell you right away, the Republicans, all of this news that is dropping in regards to right wing news media being all mixed up in um, being paid by the Russians and put putting out Russian propaganda for these hefty fees. Yeah, the Republicans and Donald Trump are now trying to minimize this investigation. You know, Donald Trump, he has done so many crazy um, pop-up news things that he's out there doing. He's talked about it in, in um, his latest campaign rally um, and where he's trying to minimize these investigations by bringing up the, the Russia, Russia, Russia investigation. Listen, for as much as Donald Trump lies, for as much as... As politicians in the Republican Party lie, y'all know my favorite saying when it comes to Republicans and, and the politicians, um, Republican politicians, all they do is lie. You can't believe anything. That they are saying they are not out talking about policy. Republicans down ballot. They are their Their campaigning is just in support of Donald Trump and his lies. So, yeah, I don't believe anything that a Republican has to say, especially if they are in support of Donald Trump. Now, remember I told you there's rumblings out there about additional content creators who are on this list with the Department of Justice and may be in some serious trouble for taking funding from these Repu these Russian bad actors. We've we talked about the four or I think it's four or six who were a part of you know, getting that hundred thousand dollars per episode. But there are people out there that are talking about 600 additional content creators who are on this list with the Department of Justice. And I wanted to know where in which legal documents 
was this information provided. It's this one right here. It's this affidavit right here that's tied to this press release that I just read for you. And that press release, you go you, if you go into that press release, there's a link to the affidavit. The affidavit itself is 277 pages long. I ain't got time to read that. I don't. I, so I did a, a, a search for content creators who have been revealed, who are tied to. And I used the search um, for TikTok and YouTube and all of that. And it took me right here to part 66 in that affidavit. And this is what I will read for you. I will put a link in, uh, to that, to this press release down in the description box and you guys can click that link. It'll take you right to the press release and in that press release right underneath the, the title, it'll give you the link to the affidavit itself. So number 66 of the affidavit reads SDA documents. Remember SDA is a company that where they had these, these doppelganger websites that they were using. Mm -hmm. So SDA documents further reveal that SDA extensively monitors and collects information about a large number of media organizations and social media influencers. One document revealed a list of more than 2,800 people on various social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook and Telegram spanning 81 countries. That SDA identified as influencers including television and radio hosts, politicians, bloggers, journalists, businessmen, professors, think tank analysts, veterans, professors, and comedians. When referring to politicians, the list often mentioned with U.S. state and or political party they represent and the position they hold in Congress. Baby, the Department of Justice has got it all. <laughs> Moving on, the U.S.-based influencers accounted for approximately 21% of the accounts being monitored by SDA. That's the Russian company. SDA is the Russian company. On another list of over 1,900 anti-influencers from 52 countries, the U.S.-based accounts compromised 26% of the total. I'm sorry, let me read that again. On another list of over 1,900 anti-influencers from um, 52 countries, the U.S.-based accounts comprised 20 26% of the total accounts being monitored by the SDA. I assess that anti-influencer indicates that the account posts content that SDA views as contrary to Russian objectives. Now, I would think if they are monitoring those accounts, that would be my account that would be on that list. Because I was opposed. I was against Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. And that might explain why two of my accounts were snuffed out over on TikTok. Banned. Thanos. Uh-huh. Over on TikTok, I was regularly targeted by troll farms. Right-wing extremist troll farms and two of my pages were Thanos over on TikTok. But moving on, based on my review of other records, this is this this is it, 
the way that this is reading, it's reading as if the per the person who put this affidavit together, who is a part of this investigation, is telling the story from their perspective. So, based on my review of other records obtained during this investigation, I know that SDA, remember SDA is the Russian company, adds information captured through its monitoring efforts to dashboards. These dashboards analyze trends in public opinion and thereby measure the effectiveness of the malign foreign influence campaign based on its impact on public opinion. SDA's content varies from project to project. However, it can include videos, memes, cartoons, social media posts, and other articles. SDA's content delivery also varies each campaign, but often relies heavily on social media posts, driving targeted audiences to domains controlled by SDA, like the subject domains. So, that explains why the 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 talkings are happening about this list of social media influencers, political commentators out on social media, on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube, are on this list for spreading Russian propaganda. And I'm pretty sure because the press release the press release said that the investigation continues. If I was on that list. As spreading Russian propaganda, I would be concerned, especially if I took money to put out a video, to put out a video that spreads Russian propaganda, that spreads lies, that spreads information in favor of Russia. This was fun. I'm glad to be back doing doing podcast episodes. How often I will do them, I don't know. But I felt going into detail about this press release was the perfect way to start. The perfect way of jumping in and getting my feet wet. Getting back on the old bicycle. If you're over on YouTube, this... Podcast will be shared over on YouTube. Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Will this, will this list be made public? I certainly hope so. I want both lists. The list that was anti-influence and I want the list that was Russian influence that they considered as Russian influencers. I want both lists to be made available to the public. Thank y'all for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next one.